Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I wanted to make a video for you on Llama Index, which is stands for a Large Language Model API. Um, and what this is is just it's kind of a framework really um, to allow you to interact and integrate with you know large language models like ChatGPT4 into various AI applications. Um, and it really serves as kind of a standardized interface for accessing and utilizing those models, which makes it easier for you to work, you know, ChatGPT4 into actual real world use cases, leveraging those capabilities, but maybe narrowing it down for, you know, a particular topic that you're really interested in. Um, and so Llama Index is super uh, useful for a couple key reasons. Uh, number one, it simplifies you know, the integration process. It allows you to easily incorp incorporate really advanced natural language systems um, into your applications without needing to have super deep expertise in how those actual large language models work. You don't need to build your own. Um, and it provides access to a large range of models with many different capabilities, sizes, so you can you know, choose the one that's really designed for your specific use case. And that's been, it's always really important in the world of AI and ML that I think gets underlooked is that you know it's not really a one size fits all for models. You should have many different models for many different use cases and they're all you know tailored to those to generate the best possible predictions. Um, and so this flexibility ensures that your resource tends to applications and even those that have, you know, very, maybe very limited computational means can still uh, benefit from large language models. Uh, and then finally, you know, the LAM index also includes uh, tools, support for scaling, monitoring, maintaining these models um, and ensuring kind of efficient, reliable performance over time. Um, so enough of the intro kind of fluff out of the way, just describing what it is. Now, what I want to do in the rest of this video is really get into it. I'm going to show you how you can set up and start working with uh, Llama Index. Uh, and if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you don't, tell me in the comments to stop making them and tell me what you want to see instead. Um, and enough groveling, back into the, into the fun stuff. So the first thing we're going to need to do because uh, Llama is, at the end of the day, just a Python package. Uh, we're just going to pip install llama index on our local machine. So you can see, just going to install all of those good old files to give us uh, llama index locally. Um, and then we'll also, if you have OpenAI, go over and create an OpenAI API key. Um, and we're going to use that in a second for actually connecting to OpenAI um, to pull out some of their available models. There is options if you don't have OpenAI to set up your own, but they're a little bit more involved. So I'm just going to start off, you know, using kind of the basic, simple example, and then we'll uh, we'll get into the crazy stuff. Maybe in a future video if you, if you found this one interesting. So then after we've done that, uh, Llama actually provides a very useful example uh, repository. So what we can do is just git clone that. Um, so git clone Jerry J. Lou Llama index .git, and then I'll pause while this downloads. So you're not sitting here right on my screen. Oh, and actually finish right literally right after I paused. Awesome. Um, so now pip install poetry. Let's see if it's a pip install. And so what poetry is is, and this is just me following the uh, Llama instructions. It's basically a handler for managing different package dependencies within uh, your local environment. So after we've installed poetry, we'll also create a poetry shell here. Um, and uh, that's because we need to actually go in and uh, into our llama index file. So it's going to be annoying later, I'm sure. Poetry shell, boom, creating our virtual environment. So now we have a virtual poetry environment and we can poetry install, install all of our local dependencies that we need, the core package requirements. You can see all of them downloading here. Um, nothing really crazy here, just kind of a lot of different formatting and ways to interact with different types of data. And again, I'll pause this while it downloads. So that one actually did take a little while. Um, so the next command you're going to want to run before we actually do kind of get started with some fun stuff is you're going to need to export an open AI key command just to have an open AI key available for Llama Next use. Um, so I'm not going to show you my actual open app, that is the format you're going to use for it. Um, and then I'm going to pause and enter my own in and connect it. So now our next step is we can finally get out of terminal. Um, and if we go into um, the same folder, data folder um, where if you aren't downloading the repo, you'll just, or if you have, you can just down, create this new llama index uh, folder. So here, all you're going to do is just save a file uh, data 
I'll move it into um, your Llama index root folder just so it's easily accessible. Um, and there's all a bunch of different other example information. This is just text from a Paul Graham essay, What I Worked On. Um, and if we want to just take a quick look at it, you can see this is just an essay of what Paul Graham worked on. Super interesting stuff. Um, and so now if we, if we in this data directory, let's actually use this data to create uh, an AI chatbot. So what we'll do is create a starter.py um, and here from law index uh, import vector store. So this thing actually needs to go out. So vector starter goes in llama index. Um, so in your root directory, not in the data directory, um, they really should reword their docs for that one. And so you'll see here, what I'm doing is just, I have an index that's being built uh, over the different documents within this folder. So here you have no module called data classes.json. Awesome. Okay, so important thing to note here is that you'll need to make sure you're in the terminal for your llama index where you ran those installation commands earlier. Um, so I was trying to execute my commands in a separate terminal environment where I was just into the folder, um, and that's what was causing the error. So if you see here, what I did is uh, I have, you know, the data is being loaded here um, from, you know, that particular Paul Graham uh, little excerpt. And you can see here, my response is to a query, what did the author do growing up? What did Paul Graham get up to when he was just a wee little boy? Um, and so it turns out he worked on writing and programming outside of school, wrote short stories. Um, and let's see, what was the author's favorite thing? Let's see, what, what's Paul Graham's favorite thing? Um, so here, again, we can run uh, Python 3 started up high see here, I'm just going to answer it a couple times. It's going to take a second to run. Um, and so once it's uh, done running, what, again, pause. So here we can see that the uh, Paul Graham's favorite thing was writing essays. Uh, crazy that we're reading one of his essays uh, since his favorite thing was writing them. Who would have thunk it, right? Um, so this is just kind of a super basic example of you know how you can get started with uh, Llama Index. So something else you, know, you can do is if you want to add logging parameters, so let's say, hey, I want to add system logging. Um, and then if I run this again, let's see, we should see some logs. Yep, and here you can see all the different logs and post requests that actually happened um, to execute this. You can see here that I'm using my ChatGPT API key to post completion to ask, hey, based on the information contained within this Paul Graham essay, answer my question about what uh, the author's favorite thing was. So with this, you can allow users to, you know, query data, you have the full capabilities of like, you know, specialized ChatGPT environment without needing to build your own LLM. And that's super great. Um, and so, you know, you can extend this, extend, you know, hey, instead of a Paul Graham essay, maybe have it educated on all the all of your documentation and then make it easy so you have a little docs buddy, you know, someone that is embedded in your company's documentation that can answer questions accurately on, hey, instead of needing to go search down the topic and then figure out, you know, what my exact question is, type it into docs buddy and boom, we have it figured out. Um, and that's similar to what Ask Astro is doing. I think uh, if you're not familiar with Ask Astro, Astronomer's kind of version of like the A16Z uh, example implementation of an AI. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And that's for Airflow. This is just kind of the basics to start building your own one. Um, you can also save your data if you want. And here, what this will do is save uh, your embeddings that you're referencing in your request to disk. So it'll make, uh, so the data will be saved to the uh, direct storage directory um, so that you can just doesn't have to load it every time you want to ask it a question around that data. Um, so it's much more efficient, efficient querying. Um, and so building off of that, there's, you know, you can introduce all of the typical Python logic, have like if statements, you could have kind of, you know, conditional or, you know, defined pathways, but still integrating AI to kind of help um, with some of, you know, the actual <laughs> implementation of, you know, asking a question so you don't have to define those pathways manually like you would have had to with kind of the previous chatbots. If you ever had worked with like a legacy chatbot, they were really just, um, you know, you would have to write a whole de decision tree of, hey, if they answer in this way, then go here. And it makes it incredibly annoying for actually asking a real question because it's not part of that defined, uh, 
you know, flow, then you're not going to get an answer. This breaks that paradigm open where now you can just give it the information, the user can query it in however they want and get a good response from it. And it you know, takes work off the user, takes work off the developers and puts it on the robots, right? And so here you can kind of see, I just want to like also go into a little bit what's happening under the hood. So you just can get understand like the context, which is what we just did. Um, so here you can see the data, you know, in a typical implementation, you have all data from many different sources going into an indexed, uh, you know, pool of data. And then you would leverage the LLM, which is, you know, looking at this index data, saying, taking the question using the context that already has capabilities of, you know, a large language model, having all the contextual information, but focusing it on your specific data, giving a response related to that data. Um, and so you're using ChatGPT as the engine, but you're using your data as the fuel. Um, and I came up with that analogy on the fly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you didn't, you want to see something on a different topic, let me know in the comments below. I thought this was pretty cool, but maybe it's not. Um, and so no matter what you thought, have a good rest of your day. Data guy out. Peace.